guys, it's Hannah and I'm here today with my November wrap up. So if you guys watched my November TBR, you guys know that I had a D20 die decide my fate and unfortunately I failed that challenge. So with that, I'm going to just kick off from there. I am still in the middle of the one that you guys chose me. Stay tuned because you guys will see the reading vlog of this and I'm going to continue reading this because I am enjoying it, but I did not finish this one in time. So this does, I do get a penalty for my December TBR, which will be coming momentarily. I'm very backed up on my videos. So I am enjoying this one, but I haven't finished this one quite yet. So I wanted to mention that since you guys will be seeing this video first. Working backwards, the most recent one that I have finished was Crown of Midnight. This is in the Throne of Last series about an assassin fighting for her freedom. And it takes off from there. This is such an incredible series. And I absolutely love this. This will forever be Gabby and I's book series that we buddy read, read when we first started like meeting and being friends. And this will forever have a special place in my heart. I was doing this a buddy read with my partner. So they are enjoying it with me. And five out of five. I... I think this one is the slow one. I don't quite remember, but I still loved it all. It's got nostalgia, but it's also fantastic too. Like I love this series. So five out of five for this one. Next up, I did a reread of Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is definitely a five out of five stars. I was wanting something that would be an easy to listen to bingeable book, and it didn't let me down. I forgot how much I loved this book and how many feels you get and like the intenseness. So this is a male male romance and it is taking place between the son of the first woman president and the son of the Queen of England. And there it's like a hate to love romance that is being hidden because they're in the public eye. It's chef's kiss, so good. If you, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody has picked this up, but if you haven't, what are you waiting for? It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It will get you through all the hard days. Go reread it if you need some self-care love because amazing. Next up, because I rolled these prompts, I read two poetry books, both by Amanda Lovelace. The Princess Saves Herself in this one and, the, and Break Your Glass Slippers. I really enjoyed both of them. Out of the two, I would recommend The Princess Saves Herself in this one, which is funny because this is the first one, but I really like the way that she tied in the story of the princess saving herself and becoming independent and the struggles that she's gone through. I really like that aspect woven in with real life things that you can relate to. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was so like touching. I ended up giving this one a five stars. This one so far is my favorite Amanda Lovelace to date that I have read so far. I really liked this one. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Not that it wasn't, I mean, four out of five stars is still fantastic, but this one just had, it didn't have the same like momentum, I feel, as The Princess Saves Herself in this one. I didn't connect with the like break your glass slipper tie in with this one either as much. I felt this was like like pulling a little too hard, like it was trying a little too hard to get it to work. Uh, but it's still really relatable, really easy to read, really impactful with some of them. I just preferred the first one, but I still really enjoyed this one as well and I can't wait to get to the rest of hers. Next up, I finished These Witches Don't Burn and this one is a female female romance and it takes place it has um different elemental witches and it talks about different like witch societies and kind of being in like hidden and it also takes place in salem and the our main character thinks that this blood witch is coming after her and because of like threats that, that have been placed so this one was really enjoyable. It's like a fun, easy read. I didn't super connect with the characters that much, but I ended up giving this one a three out of five stars. 
is enjoyable, but it's not like I recommend this to everybody. I may pick up the next one on audiobook if I stumble upon it, but it's not something that I would go and seek out, go out of my way to finish this series. For my nonfiction prompt, I was going to do Didn't See That Coming by Rachel Hollis, but something went weird with the library hold because it never came through. Even though I placed it before October and I was supposed to be getting October. So I still have that on hold. So I'm going to be getting to that one somewhat soon, hopefully, if that ever comes through. But I ended up picking up a different one, which is Night. I'll pop a picture up here. This is usually required reading. I have never read this book. I never known about this book until I started working at Barnes & Noble. And everybody came in for this as required reading. And I thought, why not? Like, this is, sounds like a book that I need to read. It, I mean, it's required reading for high school students. I've never read it. And I know it is about the Jewish faith. So I picked this one up and holy moly, this is so impactful. It's beautifully told and it's very short, but something that everybody should read. I, of course, it's five stars. You are in the point of view of someone going to Auschwitz and going through the concentration camps and what they saw on the inside and and the journey there and how people use their faith to get through things and it's such a moving story and 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 what that was like to go through and you know everybody knows you know what happened but from that point of view is such a different take on it that it's, it's so important. I think everybody should read this. I've never thought about what it would be like to fight for your life in that situation and not only fight for your life when you're in like the, the camps, but watch, he's in there with his father and watching his father go through it and, and trying to help him it's so impactful and so incredible. I just, I can't believe I've never read this before. I can't believe I've never heard of it before that it wasn't required reading for my school. This was such a, a, a moving and a powerful book. I, I, I just keep saying that over and over again because it really is. That was my nonfiction pick and I'm so glad that I read it, but it was hard to listen to. So do keep that in mind that if you are not in a good headspace to be able to have that, information maybe stay away from it until you're in a better headspace because it does take your toll on you because it's such heavy material so those are the six books that i read in november let me know down below what you read in november what was your favorite book and did you have to read at night for school let me know down below have did you ever like did you ever like hear about it in school or did you learn about it when you were an adult? I would be very interested to know where you're from and if you had to read it for school reading because I'm from Iowa and we did not have to read that in school and I really think that we should have. That is it for this November wrap up. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.